Hi there, welcome back to the course on financial forensics. In the last week, you have seen how one could use machine learning and artificial intelligence for combating frauds in the world of fintech. You have seen the impact which one could have by building powerful artificial intelligence and machine learning models for detecting frauds. In this week's content, we will be looking at a different topic, which is time series modeling. Time series plays a very key role in uh, the world of fintech. The reason being, many processes in the world of fintech follow this um, time series process. For example, the entire stock market falls under the realm of time series modeling. Likewise, there are many other uh, processes that fall into this realm of time series. So, in this uh, week's content, we will be looking at what time series modeling is all about. We will be covering the basics of time series modeling and also we will be uh, looking at some of the uh, methods which people use in industry for modeling time series problem. Of course, we won't be able to cover the nitty gritty details of time series modeling. The reason being time series by itself is a separate course to be taught. So, we will try to do justice as much as we can in this week's content. With that, we can get started. So, this is the content for this week's uh, topic. We will be just starting the course with understanding what time series is and why time series is so spe special. And then we will be looking at um, the components of time series, which are nothing but the trend, seasonality, stationarity. And then we will be looking at some of the modeling techniques like autoregressive model. And then we will be touching upon the ACF and PACF plots, which are nothing but the autocorrelation function plot and partial autocorrelation function plots. And then we will be looking at uh, the moving average process. And then finally, we will be uh, touching upon the ARMA, ARIMA and SARIMA. As the name says, all these three uh, things are more or less related with little bit of uh, uh, different. So that is the plan for this week's content. So without any delay, we can get started. Yeah. So first, let's ask this question. So why is time series so special? Okay. Um, so we all know regression, linear regression, which uh, can be modeled, uh, which is basically used for modeling. Uh, dependent variable as a function of some dependent variable and typically the equation looks something like this y equal to uh, a plus bx plus some error where your a and b are the parameters that you learn from the um, data that you have collected. So why can't we use the same idea for time series? So let us try to understand why time series are fundamentally different by taking two examples. So let's say that you want to predict the GDP of a country. Okay, so in this case, the, the first case, um, you will be predicting the GDP of a country, which will be your uh, independent variable. And uh, let's say that you are trying to model the GDP of a country as a function of the uh, population of a country, the literacy rate, and the poverty level. Okay, so typically, how you will be doing? You will be correct collecting um, data for uh, x and y, and you will be trying to build a linear regression, which looks something like this. GDP will be nothing but some uh, constant plus your beta one times the population plus beta two times your literacy rate plus beta 3 times your poverty level. So uh, once you have this equation handy, for any given combination of population, literacy rate and poverty level, you will be able to determine the GDP. Okay? You can basically try to use this equation for predicting uh, the GDP of any country. So this scenario follows all the assumptions of a linear regression model okay we have seen a couple of uh, you would have seen a couple of um, assumptions of a linear regression in one of the previous courses and this scenario follows all the assumptions of a linear regression model so now let's try to um, consider another case okay let's say that uh, you own an ice cream parlor and uh, you said you sell ice cream cones okay and um, you try to build a model that predicts 
the number of ice, ice cream cones that you will be selling on a on any given day okay so basically um, here here your y will be nothing but the number of uh, ice cream cones sold and your let's say that you are just considering the temperature of the day as a uh, independent variable okay and your hypothesis is that if the temperature is going to be high the number of ice cream sold will also be high and if the temperature is going to be low the number of ice cream sold will also be low that's your hypothesis and you just collected data for x and y and you build a model um, again it, it looks something like this beta naught plus beta 1 into temperature okay where y corresponds to the number of ice creams sold so now if you carefully look at this problem this may not satisfy all the assumptions of a linear regression right uh, if you see for example the number of ice creams that um, that i sell today will be more or less correlated with the number of ice creams that i have sold yesterday or to some uh, previous value of the number of ice creams sold for example let's say that um, today is sunday okay and uh, i want to predict the number of ice creams that i that i will be selling today and that value will be that's a very good chance that that value is correlated to the number of ice creams that i sold last sunday okay and likewise let's say it's, it's going to be uh, tuesday okay and uh, the number of ice creams that i'll be selling on a tuesday will be uh, i wouldn't say 100% but has a good correlation with the number of ice creams that i sold last tuesday the reason being during uh, weekdays um, not many people will have time to go to the market and purchase an ice cream but during weekends lot of people might come to the market and purchase some uh, ice creams okay um, so definitely your sales on weekdays will be lower than the sales on uh, weekends um, so we see this so in this case the dependent variable y has some kind of correlation with previous values of the same dependent variable it may be the immediate uh, previous day or could be some uh, lagged days okay uh, so in this case the uh, basically the number of ice creams that i'll be selling on any day t will be uh, will be having some correlation with the number of ice creams that i sold 7 days before i'm just making an assumption so this kind of uh, scenario where there is some kind of auto correlation breaks the assumption of linear regression so basically we just cannot use linear regression in this kind of a uh, uh, phenomena or in this kind of scenario where your dependent variable um, is basically dependent on the previous values of itself it may not be the immediate previous value but it could be some values in the past so that is the whole uh, idea for using uh, separate techniques in time series modeling we just cannot resort to the simple linear regression model because your assumptions of linear regression are violated um, in uh, the cases in, in cases like this so, so as i was saying um, auto correlation assumption in a li li linear regression is violated in uh, the time series setup and uh, we assume that errors are normally distributed in a linear regression okay so this is a plot between the error and um, this is a plot of errors of a linear regression and in the first image whatever you are seeing here the errors are more or less centered around zero and they are normally distributed okay i don't see any pattern in the um, in, in the data that i'm working with so this kind of scenario will definitely be um, suitable for modeling a linear regression but if in case errors are correlated by which i mean if there is some kind of auto correlation then uh, you could be i mean you will be seeing some kind of patterns in the uh, distribution of error so here if you see you see a linear trend in the error right so as my time increases as i go into the future uh, my errors keep on increasing so uh, it's not a normal distribution okay with a mean of zero on the other hand here i see the distribution of errors is normal so when i land in a scenario like this where when i mean not a correlation assumption is violated errors will be correlated and in this kind of scenario we have to resort to something else that is what we will be seeing uh, in the next coming slides and um, um, so in case if uh, auto correlation exists it is not that the process that you are dealing with is flawed the nature of the process is in such a way that there is some kind of auto correlation just that 
the assumptions of linear regression will not allow us to um, have that uh, process okay um, so typically if you see uh, stock markets uh, will have this autocorrelation property and also the sales uh, like data and you see uh, the whole i mean you, you might be knowing how important uh, stocks are for uh, uh, the world of finance and the entire stock market modeling is primarily uh, based on time series modeling so with that background we will we'll proceed further 